I'm very happy to be here. So actually, when uh, Cecilia asked me this spring, will you come to the conference, I said yes, with no idea what I was going to talk about. I just wanted to come to Barcelona and see you all. Uh, and this paper is not going to be going to present such interesting empirical results as the papers we heard yesterday and, and that Jörg is going to present. It's more like the introduction to the discussion session we are going to have afterwards. So I started to think about the paper in August, and at that time two things happened in my life. Uh, for the first, I got an invitation from Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden to be a consult consultant to in integrate gender issues in the pedagogical reform they are going to do in three of their programs, two of which are computer engineering. And um, it is kind of maybe indicative of the Swedish situation that they do have state financing for employing me as a gender consultant. They still don't have the university financing to do the pedagogical reform. So I thought I would be very well on the way with that project by now. I'm not. But anyway, it made me think, what have I learned during all these years I have been lecturing to engineering education faculty about gender inclusive teaching and, and tried some, somehow try to condense it to, to something use, useful. And the other thing that happened is that I started to plan a conference paper with my friend Christina Björkman who is a computer science teacher in higher education. She's been teaching computer science for 10, 15 years. And she also has a PhD in uh, gender studies. So her PhD th thesis is about the translations between computer science and gender studies. And we were talking about her difficulties in introducing gender research in computer science. So those two things made this presentation to what it is today. And it has two parts. The first part is about the two views to the problem we all are engaged in, the problem of too few women in computer education. And the second part is about cooperation between those two views. So, um, in the beginning when we had this problem, uh, we thought of it as a problem of um, girls being making their own choices. Girls are misinformed, they are not socialized the right way, they are not intellectually capable for these demanding studies and stuff like that. And this view still prevails among quite, quite a few of the engineering faculty and computer engineering faculty. But we have moved forwards and now we more think that the education is the problem. And in Sweden, our National Agency of Higher, Educa Higher Education says, just like Joanne said yesterday, don't blame others, blame, do what you can at your engin computer engineering departments. So uh, engineering faculty are prompted to see the education as the problem. But you can see the education as a problem in two different ways. And I call them the computer engineering view and the social science research or the uh, gender research view. And the computer engineering view is about the women. It's about women being a special group who have a special characteristics, special interests, special needs. And the problem with the education is that it's not answering to those needs of, of women. The gender research view is not about women being a special group, but of computer engineering being a special practice. So um, what compu it's computer engineering that's the problem. It is a practice that's excluding a number of people, among them lots of women, but even different kinds of men. And if you have the computer engineering view, you research on the differences between men and women. You research on the needs of women, the characteristics of women, and you implement measures, and you research on the results of those measures. If you have the gender research view, you research on computer engineering and about the men who are there. What is computer engineering like? What are the practices? Uh, and, and you don't concentrate on the women. You concentrate on the masculinity of the discipline. 
Uh, the computer engineering view has been prevailing in the computer engineering departments and most research is done according to that view and it has done a lot of good. And my lecturing to in computer engineering faculty has been very much from this view and it has made better education, better pedagogy, uh, it has made it easier for many women to thrive in the environment, both academically and socially. So, um, I'm, um, and, and there's still a lot to be done from this view. A lot of research and a lo lot, lot of measures that, that still remain to be done. And I appreciate everybody who's working with this view. On the other hand, I see inherent problems with this view. We are not reaching quite as far as we should. And the main problem is that when you have this view, you look at two groups. You look at the group of women and the group of men. And you single out the women. So even if you have the discourse, as we do in Sweden, the computer engineering faculty says, well, we should have education that's good for women because then it's good for everybody. What's good for women, it's good for everybody. And, and it's a very positive statement, but it still singles out the women. And they are a group with special needs. And uh, they are not the norm, which means they are mar marginalized, not in a negative way, but they are still kept in the periphery. And you know, we have all these women who don't want gender equality measures just because they do not want to belong to that special group. And then there's the problem that measures based on this are often not, sus not, not sustainable. It seems to be very hard to get sustainable reforms, gender reforms in computer engineering education. Um, it may happen that the one who cares about this special group of women leaves. We heard about that yesterday when Jan was telling about what happened in Carnegie Mellon after Margolis and Fischer left. The same has happened at Chalmers that I'm going to work with. They had a very big reform for 15 years ago. Nothing's left. Um, so it may, may happen that somebody leaves or the rewards don't come. We, make measure, we take measures to increase the number of women and the women don't come, so we just quit it. And very much it is a question about not seeing that, um, uh, not understanding that the problem is with us. It's not the problem of the women. It's, it's with us as computer engineering faculty that by doing the way things the way we usually do. We exclude people. So my view, the gender research view, is um, basically based on Sandra Harding's division of gender in, on three different levels, uh, symbolic, structural, and individual. And I translate it to interaction, education, and ethos or culture. So in the education, you have the individual level, which means <coughs> classroom climate, interactions between students, interactions between students and teachers, har harassment, all, all the daily practice that's going on. And it's framed by the education, by the structural level, which means subject matter, teaching methods, uh, organization of the education, premises, grading systems, all kinds of things that, are, that, that make the structure to this interaction. And all this, is um, um, colored by the symbolic level or the computer engineering ethos or the computer engineering culture, which um, kind of decides how these individual and, and structural levels are going to look like. And as a gender researcher, I'm interested in this ethos, in this culture. And it stretches beyond education, it stretches to the research in the department or the contacts with the industry and, and different, many, many different aspects. So what is this computer engineering ethos or computer engineering culture? Uh, there are a number of studies on that. There are a number of studies on engineering education. There's a number of studies of uh, computer science education. And, and you kind of, they complement each other. You can kind of pick up different features of a computer and engineering culture. And I mean, I could pop up a number of such bubbles about, about the culture. And this culture is 
often not very female friendly. And it's not very friendly to a number of men either. So in this culture, if a gender researcher is going to make a sustainable reform, um, I assert that there, she, she or he has to make the people in the culture see what something of, of what is happening, something of what this culture is like. And it is because um, uh, reform is not a one, once and for all product. Um, if I consult at Chalmers during a year and a half, I will leave the scene and the people will be there. And every sub subsequent change in the program, every new teacher has to think about gender. Otherwise, we'll be back to zero again. So that is why to make sustainable reform, there has to be a critical mass of people. Uh, it's impossible to convert everybody, but there has to be more people than just one or two who have some kind of deeper knowledge of, of what the problem is about, that it is a cultural issue. It is an issue of what computer engineering is about. And of course, uh, it is a hard thing to do. It is very difficult for gender research to, to get into computer engineering. One of the problems is that there are, they are two very different academic cultures that have very different status. So social science research and particularly gender research is not very, in very high esteem about, among computer engineers. Um, I know that after all my years of lecturing to those people, Christina Björkman, who is one of the faculty, knows that because her PhD in gender research is worth nothing at her department. Normally when you get a PhD, it changes your status. Her PhD hasn't changed her status a bit. So you have to get a legitimacy in, in some other way. And one way is learning to talk the language of computer engineers. And that's something that Christina has helped me quite a lot with. Uh, she has made a study uh, studying what happens when gender researchers and, and computer scientists talk about reform and realize that quite a few of very central words are interpreted and used differently in those two cultures. Words like problem or understanding or constructing, uh, gender research and computer engineers mean different things with those words. And so um, gender research needs to learn the language. And a very basic dividing line is the view on instrumentality. I mean, if for, for a computer engineer, a problem is something that's, that is to be solved. For a gender researcher or a social science researcher, a problem is something to be understood, preferably solved, but that's not necessary. Uh, but, but for computer engineer, you have to solve the problem. So uh, you have to learn to talk the language. Uh, you have to get some kind of respect as a professional, as a person, because your discipline doesn't get it. You have to get it as a person. On the other hand, gender researchers need to respect computer engineers. And that's not very self-evident, because when I go to my department of gender research and talk about those engineers, I, I don't always feel they are very much respected. Uh, their culture is not very much respected about gender, gender res researchers. Uh, so it also means I have to respect the positive features of that culture, and I do. For example, I like the instrumentality. If I get through the message that you have a problem, this is a possible solution, computer engineers will implement it. Social scientists will discuss and discuss and discuss and nothing happens. So what I try to do, I try to do kind of translations between those two cultures um, and um, find a kind of middle way. And there's one example of, um, of a translating the concept of gender. It's very foundational when starting on the gender reform. What are we talking about when we are talking about gender? And <coughs> computer engineers are very good at categorizing and just like most people, they have the view of gender 
as a dichotomous cate category. You have men, you have women, you have male students, you have female students. Um, and gender researchers, well, yes, but it's not the interesting thing. The interesting thing is masculinity and femininity. So I try to change the picture of the two categories to a scale uh, that goes from masculinity to femininity and where the mixes are interesting. And this is still not a gender research view because I'm still not saying that there are many masculinities, many femininities. It's still kind of a, a bipolar view, but it's, um, it enables us to talk about culture, to talk about other things than just men and women, girls and boys. So we can, uh, we can place the education on the scale. Where is the education? Is it in the, it's in the male, male end of the scale. Where do we want it to be? We don't want it to be there. Definitely not. So where do we want it to be? Where are our students today? There. Which students do we want? Do we want those? Probably we want, don't, don't want to those of very feminine students. I have worked with this with uh, female students and kind of shown that you can move along the scale depending on, on where you are. And um, the problem that Swedish engineering, computer engineering education has in recruiting good students overall can possibly be explained by saying that, well, our education is very far to the left, to the mainland, and possibly even the boys are going farther to the right and to the feminine end. It's, it's, it's more and more varied even among the men. So, so you can use this scale in, in very many different ways. And it's one of the devices in trying to, trying to uh, translate the concept, trying to open up. So we are going to cooperate. We have two different views, me and the computer engineers at Chalmers. Their question is, how can we get the girls we want? My question is, how can you make computer engineering more gender neutral? And so we should, uh, we should work together. And of course, because I'm the one consulting, I have to accept their question. I have to help them with that. They have a problem, I have to help them to, to solve it. And so I say, well, yes, we take your problem. Uh, but don't operationalize it to enrollment figures. Rather, try to see how many girls you can retain, because that's something you can do something about. How many girls are going to choose your education? There are so many other factors affecting that figure, so it's, it's not relevant. But I also want to say, well, you have to accept my problem definition. It is not only about your teaching methods. It's not only about what you are doing right now. Uh, you are a part of a change that is bound to take place if gen computer engineering is going to be gender neutral. And um, uh, you can't change computer engineering alone, but you need to be part of it. And you want to be part of it when it happens. So, so we have to work on two different levels, on two different time frames. And that's where we are right now. And, and I hope I can tell you more about what happened later in some, some other context. Thank you very much.